Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of my Voice Over Weekly Stew. I have props this week. I have props this week. I do, I do. Wait, 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 here it comes. Ah, what a delicious taste uh, from this past week's voiceover work. Ah, yes, quite the stew this past week. Variety, variety, variety. Somebody pointed out something to me um, about the last couple of uh, videos I posted, and that's that I tend to do this a good bit, and, and, and I watched a couple of the videos and, and I did watch myself and observe myself doing this, except I was kind of down here. So I don't know if I need to grow my beard longer, the goatee longer. So it's kind of this long sort of uh, uh, ZZ top sort of thing here. Or, or if I just uh, I, I need to stop doing it. So I don't know. This is kind of a habit I do. It's when I'm pondering. It's when I'm thinking. It's when I'm um, uh, in need of using my hands to speak because I am about an eighth Italian. So, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Anyway. This week's stew was was uh, quite the smorgasbord, the buffet, the extravaganza. Uh, fill in the blank. There you go. Uh, it started out uh, with something I've been working on the past couple of weeks, and that was a, an, an audio book about a blue unicorn and its journey to Ozum. I'm near the tail end of the project now, a uh, 40-chapter book, and I'm on the last 10 chapters or so. So I'm looking forward to wrapping that up and uh, still having a great time doing the English story tell a voice, and uh, I've got some good feedback on that. And I've, like I said, it's taken me longer to do than a normal audiobook would, um, but it's a blast to do, and and it's given me a chance to um, explore um, that whole British voice uh, accent um, that I've never really messed with before, other than just playing around. I will take that horn. It's so close, I can nearly touch it. It's as good as mine already, was all the sorcerer could think. Mog laughed disdainfully. <laughs> Your horn will be mine, he shrieked. Never, Ozum shouted rearing up to his full height in anticipation of the battle to come. He was ready to lead the fight against this evil. His right front hoof pawed the air in a signal for his companions to make themselves ready. Two prides of manticore, each containing three powerful males, moved across the field to flank the sorcerer on either side. With his staff, he signaled for them to advance upon the unicorn. Uh, I had a, a voice uh, over project to do for a, a video game, uh, playing the part of an, uh, a headquarters commander. Very direct, very abrupt, very in your face, very command. Follow the orders, don't talk back. Sort of a, a voiceover style. I then did a, a voiceover for a commercial for uh, cal-waste.com, trying to encourage folks to recycle responsibly, because uh, irresponsible recycling is just... You know, it's just not a good thing to do. Tuesday was quite the business-focused uh, day in voiceover. Um, early in the morning, I had a project for a Canadian real estate company doing their marketing reports. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's going to be a monthly thing for them. Later on Tuesday, I did a, a video sales letter uh, playing the part of, of a person um, that had been through some very difficult times and had uh, come across uh, this, this great idea um, and was basically called on to voice act and portray that role. And it, and it did call for some marketing savvy, but at the same time, it called for more of, of connecting to people on an emotional human level, kind of the idea that, that you get so many times of you're sitting across the kitchen table and you're relating to somebody and you're just talking about where you're coming from and where they might be, and you're just being human and real. Then, after months of 16-hour days, an opportunity for a big promotion opened up. I thought this was my break. Surely all my hard work would be noticed by my bosses, right? Hmm, <sighs> not quite. I didn't just not get the promotion, but a few weeks later I was called in for a meeting where I was given the one-two punch in the gut. I was told that after years of loyal service, I was being laid off. I was crushed. What made it much worse was seeing the disappointment in my wife's eyes. 
I always imagined myself as a, as a superhero to my family, but now I felt powerless to provide for them the life they deserved. I didn't know how we were going to make it. I, I had no idea, but I still believed in all my heart that we'd get through this somehow, some way. We always had. But this time, things were different. After visiting my mom at the hospital, I came back home. I'm looking forward to my little girl running into my arms and, and giving me a big hug to welcome daddy home. But when I opened the door, when, when I opened the door, I met with an eerie silence. No one's home. Dolls, clothes, toiletries. In fact, all their belongings are missing. And I'm hit with a deep sinking feeling as I realize my worst fear has come true. On the counter, there's a note. I'm sorry, Darren. By the time you see this, I'll be gone. I hate the thought of you being alone right now, but I can't keep going on like this. The stress, worry, and arguments have become too much. This isn't the life we imagined together. I need a fresh start. We both do. I think in time you'll see this as the best decision for all of us. I hope one day you can forgive me. Wednesday. Wednesday, it, it had to go down as one of the wackiest, most diverse days in voiceover styles and genres uh, that I can remember. Um, I even posted something about it on, on my Facebook. Uh, there, I just did. I caught myself doing it. Ladle, ladle, ladle. You know, slap the hand. I did it. I did it. I recognized I did it because I was thinking about not doing it. Early in the morning, I had a... Um, an explainer video to do for a dewatering scientific product uh, relating to dewatering um, for an Israeli company. Dewatering is the process of removing water from a solid material or particulates. This process is also referred to as groundwater control, sludge dewatering, or construction site dewatering. A little bit after that, I had to transition into a southern sort of... Uh, I don't want to say good old boy, but uh, it was a southern accent for a Toyota Tacoma spec spot about going four-wheel driving. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm talking to my truck. I'm talking to my truck about getting outdoors and, and having some fun in the great outdoors and four-wheel driving and having a good old time. The most natural thing I've ever felt before is when I'm holding the keys to a brand new 2017 Tacoma. So I did that, uh, and then I transitioned from there into a military commander, very abrupt, very in your face, very, yes, sir, let's do it, a video game project. And then after that, <laughs> after that was very unique because I had to do a jingle for a chicken restaurateur, uh, a chicken restaurant owner, a chicken, um, they sell chicken, they where you eat chicken, uh, an Alabama a store chain. Um, I'm not going to mention the name of the store chain because I don't have permission to do that. But I did a um, a jingle. But before then, I did a prospector voice. And if you know the name of the chicken restaurant, then then the prospector who searches for certain things, well, that will kind of answer the question if you're looking around and wondering. And it was also the name of a James Bond uh, movie too. Anyway. Uh, the, the restaurant um, wanted a tagline for their commercials in an old prospector type voice. And then they wanted uh, me to sing, but then combine the singing. So it sounded uh, much like a commercial they linked to as reference. Um, so I was singing in harmony with myself at the end as the tag outline. So I would say the line as the old prospector, and then I would sing the lines, and I had to do multiple singing parts. And I, I know nothing about um, singing and keys and, 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 and that sort of thing. So I did the best I could by mimicking what the client sent me, and he admittedly said, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but this is just kind of an example of what it might sound like. So I took that and then did a high version and a low version and um, then sang that line numerous times and then blended it the various takes I did together until I had about three or four different versions of it and then sent that out to them. And they loved it. And then later that day, to cap it all off, I did the English-British um, voiceover style for the Blue Unicorn book that I'm working on, the audio book. So it was just all over the place. So uh, that was um, 
uh, quite the mix that particular day. Thursday was a great day. I got booked for several children's storytelling voiceovers and got to do a rendition of The Wheels on the Bus with a slight variation for this Chinese uh, customer uh, that sends me a lot of uh, voiceover work for children's stories. And uh, so that was fun. Uh, I did actually another British voiceover project for an American fireworks company because um, what I sent them last time as part of their, uh, they do a podcast, it's called Star, Star Fireworks. And um, I did various voices, but the one they liked the best uh, promoting their company was this, as they called the uptight British guy. Forgive me, my British UK friends, but that is how they defined what I was doing. Mm, where you almost have to kind of raise your nose like this, like this. And um, so they liked it. And it, it, it got some laughs for them, and, and they liked it. It was for their fireworks store, and it was uh, it worked. So that was good. Uh, on, th on Friday, uh, I actually did uh, some e-learning projects uh, for a great client in Texas who sent me some swag, as I understand it, uh, uh, hats, which I will wear in honor of them the next time I do some more voiceover work for them. Um, uh, Energy World Net is the name of the company, and I do a ton of uh, uh, safety uh, training uh, voiceover work for those guys, and I really love working with the, with the crew out there in Texas, EWN, EWN, or EWN, depending on where you're from. So uh, later that morning, um, on Friday, I got uh, a call from a client in Florida that I do a lot of work for, and he does a lot of work for uh, restaurant companies. And they needed a, uh, a very serious toned, uh, no messing around project on sexual harassment. And so that continues to be a problem in the workplace. So people continue to have to take the training for it. Saturday, I had a big day, uh, did five more children's uh, stories uh, for another client in China. I do some children's voiceover, uh, uh, voiceover work for character voices and, and such. Um, did a project for a Singapore uh, client that the first time I'd worked with him um, for an explainer video with characters. Uh, they actually sent me the animation of the video, and then I had to kind of sync it up, but at the same time I had to uh, smooth out the script because uh, the writer wasn't necessarily uh, English-speaking, and that was not their first language. So one of the things I do is try to smooth those things out script, proofread, and edit, and then uh, smooth it out, and do my best to sync it to an existing um, audio track, which essentially had an electronic or digitally uh, produced audio track. Um, and um, so try to match that as best I could, and they were happy with it. And the, the tricky part was I had to do multiple uh, different character voices, and including several female voices, which I told them, you know, initially, the best you can hope for is sort of something comical and lighthearted and very, ooh, very, very kind of over the top. Because, you know, this old boy just can't quite do a female voice like this. Uh, but I gave it to him and he said, hey, look, we'll manipulate it digitally in our software. So I said, more power to you. At which point he said, huh? So, uh, language barrier. But, hey, it all works out in the end because... Um, they, were, they liked it, and I had fun with it. Let's see. So later on, I uh, did another Southern, almost like a the, the person sending me this project said, we just need a couple of lines. It's for a bigger project. And they needed me to do it in kind of a uh, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton slash Southern um, character voice is what they said. So I tried to do it as best I could, uh, reading the lines and, and trying to envision it. And uh, I, I, I hope it turned out well. And that wrapped up my week um, uh, for my voiceover weekly stew. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, let me bring out the props one more time. I brought these in here to the studio. So um, I had quite the taste fest bonanza this past week. And my voiceover week, my voiceover week. I wonder if I could do a, like a cool effect with that. If I could like put the mic in the, in the pot like this. And then read it like this, and I could get a different effect like this. I don't know. It's kind of cool. I will uh, go to any and all links to try to deliver quite the uh, customized voiceover style for um, whatever is needed. So as I indulge in this fake prop stew, 
I'll uh, let you guys get back to work and, and doing something more productive than listening to me. Uh, but I have a blast, and I, I enjoy sharing and wrapping up the, the week uh, with this voiceover weekly, Stu. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, too. And uh, you guys have a blessed week, and uh, we'll see you next time around. Bye.